Well, good morning, although it is the afternoon when we are filming this service, um, and it's very lovely to be back here in the chapel at Knoll to celebrate a Eucharist for this 14th Sunday after Trinity. Um, it's very sad not to be able to have um, all the regular congregation here, although I should say I have two members of the Knoll bubble here with me today as we record this service. Um, so we send greetings all from here. So we begin our service in the usual way um, with the greeting which is on your orders of service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and with thy spirit. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in pen penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray the collect for this Sunday. Almighty God, whose only Son hath opened for us a new and living way into thy presence, grant that with pure hearts and constant wills we may worship thee in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. 
So now Peter and Rosemary are going to bring us our Old Testament reading and the Gospel. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 50. Realising that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Forgiveness. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. The parable of the unforgiving servant. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Peter and Rosemary. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. From my experience as a hospital chaplain and someone who takes funerals, I know that one prayer that people still know is the Lord's Prayer. So you would think that the idea of forgiving as we are forgive, forgiven would be one very familiar one that people associate with Christianity. But in my experience, often it isn't. When you ask people what they think Christianity is all about, 
They often say it's all about being a terribly good person and then repenting when you're not. In fact, just a couple of days ago, outside the church where I work in Bromley, I spoke to a young-ish man who said, well, my granny is a very good Christian, but I'm not so good, so I'll have to repent on my deathbed. And he hadn't realized that the whole idea of Christianity is that God will keep on forgiving us however many times we get it wrong. And I think that the popular press reinforces an idea of the world being full of good and bad people, not just a world full of people who are all um, imperfect and need forgiveness from God and each other, and also need to be able to forgive too. And more recently, I've wondered if it starts quite young, because a few years ago, I asked some children um, to imagine what, they, what would happen if somebody was horrible to them. And they all said the person must say sorry. That had been dinned into them for sure. But they weren't quite sure what might happen after that. Only one child said um, he thought maybe he would have to forgive the person. And of course, as we grow up, learning to forgive is something we have to do if we're going to keep our friendships but we do struggle sometimes to express what that really means. And that is what Jesus is talking about here, how and why we forgive. First of all, he answers a question from Peter about how often we forgive. Would seven times, Peter says, maybe be enough? Not seven, Jesus says, but 77. And of course, it's hyperbole. Um, but Jesus wants to say it's not just about keeping a very large uh, register of wrongs. It's about not keeping a register at all. And in the parable that follows, Jesus shows why giving generously in forgiveness is so important. He tells the story of a, a king's servants settling their debts. One man's debt is 10,000 talents, which would have been um, an enormous amount. Even the annual um, tax bill for Judea was only 600 talents, so a huge amount. And facing a future in slavery, the man begs for time. But instead, he gets something much better. His whole debt is cancelled. He's free to start again. But far from showing the same generosity, he immediately demands a much tinier sum from a colleague who can't pay up and is put in jail. And the king hears from the of the first servant's actions and condemns him. The message is simple. We should be merciful because God is endlessly merciful towards us. Wholehearted forgiveness is a response to God's grace. But what does forgiveness look like? and feel like? And what are the stumbling blocks for us? Well, quite a lot of us don't like the idea of unconditional forgiveness without limits. Like Peter, we're hoping there's a sort of cut-off point or statute of limitations. Um, I know myself, it's really easy to do a bit of tactical forgiveness to get the moral high ground. Um, we, of course, I accept your apology, we may say, but we might be thinking, now they owe me one. That, of course, is not forgiveness at all. Forgiveness is something that can't be measured, or as Shakespeare put it through Portia in The Merchant of Venice, the quality of mercy is not strained. So forgiveness in this parable is not just about clemency, um, or letting somebody off. It is cancellation, wiping out what they've done wrong. Well, sometimes people feel being too merciful is sitting light to sin. And yet, Jesus' message of forgiveness is twinned with a very stern warning to wrongdoers in the previous parable. In Jewish tradition, there was no tension between reproof and loving mercy. They were two things that had to work together. It's about, in a simple way of saying it, hating the sin, but still 
loving the sinner. Another question people ask is, can we forgive people when they're not sorry? Well, of course, Jesus did. Father, forgive them, he said on the cross. They know not what they do. And of course, anybody who's had children knows that as a parent, you're often having to forgive a tiny, unrepentant child. But that comes quite naturally, I think, to parents. But in the end, of course, if we're aiming for reconciliation, as many people have seen after great strife and conflict, then true repentance and forgiveness need to go together. Another challenge to giving and receiving forgiveness is finding the right way to express it, the right language. Sometimes a physical gesture can be worth a thousand words. That's why Christians for centuries have showed a sign of peace before communion. And Father Vincent Donovan, who was a missionary in the Maasai tribe, said the thing that they had to do before they could be united was to hand over um, some grass. And if that didn't happen, the mass had to be postponed until that had been done. Sometimes when we're finding it really hard to forgive one person, sometimes prayer and reflection can help. Praying for them and also remembering how much God loves them um, can make it easier to forgive them. Of course, there are some wounds so deep that forgiveness is almost impossible, and I think it would always be wrong um, to put any pressure on somebody who had been a victim of abuse or violence to forgive when they are not ready to do that. The Dutch Christian Corrie ten Boom who often speaks about forgiveness, told how she was giving a talk in a church in Germany after the war on the very subject of forgiveness. And she met a guard from Ravensbrück where she had been a prisoner. Since the war, he said, I have sought and received God's forgiveness, but now I'm asking it from you. She felt almost paralysed and prayed for strength to shake his hand. And somehow, she felt that afterwards God gave her the grace that she needed to forgive even this man. And searingly painful though forgiveness can be, sometimes the alternative not to forgive is much worse. The suffering of the unforgiving servant at the end of the parable is harsh, but consciously refusing forgiveness can be excruciating. It can extend the power of the original hurt. In our Old Testament reading for this Sunday, we heard how Joseph, in the end, forgave his brothers. What a different story it would have been if he had not. And imagine a world with no forgiveness. That would be torture indeed. That's why sometimes a powerful sign of forgiveness is a step in hope, even amidst the ruins of the worst suffering. A Methodist colleague of mine heard a story which I'm sure I have told before in this chapel, but it were, it's worth repeating in this context. He was on a trip to Zebradnitsa where that terrible massacre took place and he spoke to a Muslim woman near her husband and son's graves. Why did you come back here to make your home again, he asked. And she said, because I have to believe that one day it will be possible for Bosniak, Muslim and Serb people to live here in peace again. Such is the hope that can be born of forgiveness, a glimpse of resurrection. Amen. 
we affirm our faith now in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who is with the Father and the Son together, worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to our Father in heaven. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen James and Simon, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for church leaders in difficult times as they guide your people. Especially we pray for all in the service of Christ who are weary or dismayed, remembering especially brothers and sisters in our link diocese in Tanzania and in Zimbabwe, trying to help the poorest amidst the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray especially for all those involved in making decisions about public health, for wisdom and guidance, for all scientists working in research, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We remember all those in our local community for whom this is an especially hard time at work, especially all working in the NHS, in our care homes, in jobs where they have to take risks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We bring before us in the quietness all those known to us who are suffering in any way today, those who are unwell, those who are undergoing treatment, those who are lonely or missing someone they love. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Hear us too, Heavenly Father, as we remember before you all those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ, those whom we miss and see no longer. According to your promises, grant us with them at the last a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come now to the peace, and um, after the sharing of the peace, um, I'm going to hold up the microphone so everybody at home can hear us sharing the peace here. Jesus came and stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad, for they had seen the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So let's just, we'll just say together, peace be with you to everybody at home. Peace be with you. So peace, peace with all of you at home. So our service continues now with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. For he is thy living word. Through him thou hast created all things from the beginning and fashioned us in thine own image. Through him thou didst redeem us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman, to die upon the cross and to rise again for us. Through him thou hast made us a people for thine own possession, exalting him to thy right hand on high, and sending forth through him thy holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed... took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as he shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, the resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died.
Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of thy divine majesty, renew us by thy Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Our service continues with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
So we turn towards the end of our service books and say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. And so we come now towards the end of our service. Um, and uh, I'd like to just say a huge thank you to everybody who's helped make it possible for this service to be recorded here this Sunday. We don't quite know um, when we will be able to gather here again in the usual way because of the restrictions of distancing and the fact that this chapel is in a private home. But we do all think of each other fondly and often. Um, many thanks to Peter and Rosemary for reading, um, to James for playing for us. And it's lovely to have Bridget and Sarah here in the chapel as well. And I would say thank you too to Rory for helping me film and uh, Robert for patiently making it all possible. And so wherever we are, whatever the week holds for us, um, whatever's around the corner, we part from one another today, um, knowing that we go, taking God's love into the world and with his blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all those who you love and are called to love day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.